So this is, as I said, round table number six of the Global Symposium, the second one of the Universitate program, which is being hosted by Universidade Católica Portuguesa. This round table will address service learning as a contribution to the whole person's education, hands, head and heart after Pope Francis. Uh, it's my pleasure to be the moderator of this round table together with the assistance of Cecilia Ribeiro. The round table will take place in English and French and you can follow it in either of these two languages. We will have eight speakers in total and each speaker will have 10 minutes to make the presentation. At the end of the presentations, we will have some time for comments and questions received through the chat. The chat is now disabled, but it will be on again towards the end of all the presentations. And if you want to have a look at the abstracts of these presentations, you just have to go on the website of the symposium where you will find them all. You will also get the author's contacts and you will also have the possibility to look at the virtual posters. All the materials are on the website of the symposium. So before giving the floor to our speakers, uh, I would like to ask you, kindly ask you, to please turn your mics off. And so here we go. We will, um, we will start this uh, round table with, um, with a first presentation by Mil Rosienas and Romulus Quizon, who will share the analysis of the narrative of students' challenges and opportunities in e-service learning. So as you know, you have 10 minutes and uh, please try to really stick to, to the, the time allotted because uh, there are a lot of authors. We have two hours, which is quite a lot, but there are a lot of presentations and time um, goes, uh, goes past um, quite, uh, quite quickly. Quite quickly. So the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, ma'am. Permission to share my screen. Good morning, everyone. I am Milrose Lienas, and I am with my co-author, Mr. Romulus Vincent Quison. We are from the University of Santo Tomas, Manila, Philippines. Our paper is titled Analysis of the Narratives of Students' Challenges and Opportunities in E-Service Learning. The first part of this presentation shall be given by Mr. Romulus, my co-author. Thank you. The study conducted a descriptive analysis on the e-service learning experiences of the third year or junior sociology students of the University of Santo Tomas. The e-service learning engagement is a course requirement in SEL 3229 or Sociology of Education and Service Learning course. Next. For the study's objectives, the main objective is to explore and analyze the narratives of opportunities experienced by the students during their service learning engagements. Next. On the other hand, the specific objectives of the study mainly focus on identifying and understanding the opportunities presented by the e-service learning engagement and the challenges experienced by the students throughout their e-service learning engagements. Next. To make sense of the data gathered in the study, the study used qualitative research and autoethnography as the primary research orientation. On the other hand, in analyzing the data collected, the researchers used reflexive analysis to correlate the students' experiences to the Tomasian core values or the thesis, which stands for competence, commitment, and compassion. 
Here is the comprehensive guide to the theoretical model used in the study. The study used the resilience model to identify the challenges and opportunities provided by the e-service learning engagements. Exposure to adversity deals with the challenges encountered during the session, while on the other hand, evidences of adaptation deal with the mechanism employed by the students and their service learning partners in overcoming the challenges imposed by the e-service learning engagement. Next. In this study, the data source comes from the different written materials such as course syllabus, student manual, toolkits, and the submitted outputs such as different reflection outputs by the student mentors. The usage of narrative and document analysis, autoethnography, and the reflexive model was also utilized to correlate the student's written outputs to the Tumashan core values, which was mentioned earlier. For the next following slides, my co-author will take over and will discuss the succeeding parts of the study. The entire e-service learning engagement was anchored on the functionalist view of education and the concepts or lessons that they tackled about 21st century skills. Uh, the student participants, as mentioned earlier, were the third year sociology students and their learning partners were uh, purposely selected and they were grade schoolers, junior high school students, and senior high school students, mostly from public schools in different parts of the Philippines. And they were identified to be students, we identified and determined that they were students who needed academic help. And so in the very heart of this e or online service learning engagement, our student participants provided free tutorial services utilizing different online platforms. The help extended was uh, particularly given in social studies subjects, but uh, were not uh, only limited to this particular subject. Now, uh, based on the methodology, which was initially mentioned by my co-author, these were the findings that we got. As to the challenges, um, the challenges evident in this study can actually be clustered in terms of issues in technology, social interactions, personal and emotional struggles of students, and other academic-related issues. On the other hand, uh, the opportunities that were uh, determined by the study conducted in, were social involvement and personal growth, which included the practical application of 21st century skills. Uh, when we speak of resilience as presented in the theoretical framework a while ago, the resilience in the e-service learning engagement provided or opened doors of opportunities for transformative education or integral education, particularly referring to the head, hands, and heart by actualizing knowledge and skills to help other students like them in the time of pandemic. The succeeding slides that I shall be sharing with you are the vignettes of students' engagements. So this would actually summarize the students' uh, reflections and realizations as they engage themselves in online service learning. Allow me to read some of these highlighted parts or phrases of their reflections so that I can further substantiate the, the claim that the e-service learning help, does help our students a lot. One, opportunity to share my knowledge and skills. Second, opportunity, another student, second student, opportunity to help in this time of pandemic, to continue with that simple action of giving back gives us a sense of fulfillment in our lives. Aside from that, not only our learning partner was able to learn from us, but we mentors, we also learned a lot from our engagements. Giving back to society does not only benefit them, but we also do. Contribute to society as it gives us a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Appreciated this task, and we both learn from our learning partners as well. This is one of the greatest gifts you could ever have sharing what you know, the learnings and experiences that you have. Even at a very young age, you could help them shape their understanding and knowledge of the world. These are some of the 
images or photos or pictures that uh, were submitted to us as part of the documentation of the activity while students engage in e-service learning with their uh, student partners. Another set of pictures, you know, also part of the documentation. So to, to summarize the entire discussion, it is, this is what we wish to emphasize in our study, that amid this pandemic, e-service learning provides a platform for meaningful and transformative experiential learning and civic engagements among our young students. That was through actualizing concepts learned in the course by providing service learning and giving or having opportunities to touch other people's lives and be able to give back to the society. To conclude, the online service learning engagements actualize the Tomasian ideals where competence correlates to the head, commitment to the hands, and compassion to the heart of every student participant for a transformative and integral education. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be able to share our experiences in e-service learning. Mabuhay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for this uh, inspiring presentation. So I will try merci, to... Merci, merci pour cette présentation inspiratrice. Je voudrais partager mon écran, mais pour ce faire, il me semble que les orateurs doivent arrêter de partager les leurs. Voilà. Donc, euh, je partage mon écran pour que l'on continue. Nous allons passer à Benjamin Mamblé, qui partagera avec nous l'expérience de la chorale des étudiants de l'UCAC, lieu d'expérience de l'apprentissage service. Donc Benjamin vient de l'Université catholique d'Afrique centrale au Cameroun. The interpreter apologizes. We cannot hear Benjamin. I cannot hear you. Uh, no, uh, I'm receiving, yes. It's okay now. It's better. <laughs> it's better, but still a bit. If, um, I would advise you to, to unplug uh, the microphone and plug it again into the computer because it's some, some noises. Um, No. Ça va, c'est mieux? Oui, bien sûr. <laughs> Alors, je parlais des objectifs. Des objectifs. Right, so, I will be discussing our objectives, which were to share the joy of singing with others and to inaugurate a dialogue between our choir and the society we live in, to encourage and distinguish the quality of the singing, presented different possibilities of interpreting the works of our society, and proving that singing can contribute to the transformation of our society according to the relevance of its message. Further, to show choral singing to a wider 
audience as an actor for social transformation and with the participation and involvement of our students. Our method copies the see, judge, act philosophy of members of any choir. In the first term, meaning October, November, December, they work on seeing from January through March. They move on to the second stage. And then from April to June, they work on acting. The description of the main results and the corresponding discussions are as follows. Service learning work consists of defining social objectives and academic objectives for a choir of students within a Catholic university. Its transformative impact within society changes constantly. Service learning is a method which develops the spirit of a community, the civic engagement, and personal capabilities as compatible with other educational strategies. The pedagogic strategy that we use enables participants to learn to work based on their needs within the context of their everyday lives in order to make it better so that our future graduates will contribute to the technological, economic, and cultural development of our society. To that end, the Catholic University must train them at every level from scientific, technological, artistic viewpoint, and from the viewpoint of ethics as well. So the members of our choir are trained in terms of honesty, solidarity, and integration, which are the values, among others, that they must develop through cross-cutting skills that are related to the different studies they undertake, which are of importance for their professional lives, as pointed out by their employers, not by the students. Analyzing and solving problems, innovation, entrepreneurship, teamwork, leadership, ethic responsibility, environmental responsibility, effective communication, critical thinking, time management, permanent learning, and learning about contemporary issues are all key issues to us, key aspects. So we work with our students through a solidary project, which allows our students to improve their knowledge and their pedagogical aptitudes. And it involves them working together on a real world issue which allows them to show their leadership, to use their positive skills and to discover new fields of interest as well as new skills. Finally, they also have the feeling of belonging in participating in these collective undertakings. So to conclude, We work on different scripts from the saint texts. And so when they sing, we evangelize as well. So they work on a passage, but then there is a great finale after which the choir that has best conveyed the values of our project will win the choir contest. These contests allow choirs to see how they measure up vis-a-vis -vis others and to show and broadcast the talents of the competitors to the African society in a word that is 
progressively getting more and more secularized. It is a great value to be able to show a religion to society. Thank you very much for your attention. Montserrat speaking, thank you very much. It's like a, a very nice um, service learning experience. Very nice one. So, now we, um, well, we still, uh, we will remain in, uh, in Africa, but this time we will move to Kenya with uh, Titus Pacho, who will uh, speak about uh, employability in a service learning program. So uh, Titus, you also have uh, 10 minutes for your presentation. Hello, good afternoon and welcome. Okay, I'm Titus Pacho from Kisi University in Kenya, but I'm presenting currently from Tanzania, where I came for some conference also. So my presentation is about uh, employability in the service learning program, which is a case study which I did from my university here. Okay, sorry. So in many universities in East Africa produce graduates every year. But the paradox is that uh, most of the employers complain that these students or graduates, they lack employability skills, technical mastery, and basic work-related capabilities. In a report by the Inter-University Council of East Africa, that's the body that uh, tried to control the universities in East Africa, the report, they did a research and the report indicates that there are enormous gaps between qualifications offered by the higher education system in the region and the human resource needs by the job market and the general society. The mismatch between qualification offered by the higher education institutions and the labor market needs call for a paradigm shift to innovative approaches to education in the region. The purpose of this study is to explore the role of service learning as an innovative strategy in enhancing graduate employability. The study used a case study, a case of St. Augustine University of Tanzania service learning program. This university is a Catholic university run by the Catholic bishops of Tanzania. And I took this study because I used to work in this particular university. The main objectives of this study one is to investigate the contribution of service learning to graduate employability. Two, to suggest ways on how to implement service learning at universities. And three, to identify challenges facing the implementation of service learning at universities. The methodology of the study was mainly qualitative approach, which is mainly interpretive paradigm based on a case study design. And the participant of the study were 25, including 12 students, seven alumni, three members of the university service learning team and three university administrators, three leaders of organizations where the students do their community service programs or activities. The sampling was purposive using the criteria of professional role, expertise and experience. Data were collected through focus group discussion, interviews, observation and a review of documents. And analysis was based on coding and categorizing those codes into major themes. The South Service Learning Program is tied to three elements, as we know about any service learning activity. That is, there's an element of learning, there's an element of service, and there's the element of living, or what we call the element of reflection. So in this program, students are normally allocated places where they go and do some community service. And these places could vary from schools or special schools to helping different areas, even in terms of research. So that is basically the preview of that program. So we have what the service learning team, which is made of staff, and the students have also their own leaders who are helping in the coordination of the program. Some of the findings based on the objectives are what is the connection between service learning and graduate employability? 
One, it was found that this particular type of experience enabled the students to build their bridges as they work on it. So they build what they can do in their future when they are studying at the university level. It prepares them for their careers through work-based learning. That means that when they are attached to particular organizations, these students try to acquire the work-related skills in that particular organization. The students are able to apply their knowledge and skills in real life situations. And this is very, very important because when you apply your knowledge and skills, that means you are able to use it, not just being a theoretical knowledge, which is more abstract. Service learning activities also enable the student to build social capital. And this will enable them to have networks on where they can look for jobs at the end of their studies. And it also enables them to take active role in civic engagement so that they can be able to engage in making a difference in different organizations around their communities. And there's an element of problem solving in that because these students are involved also in practical aspects and also sometimes in the research to address problems, they develop problem solving critical skills. Teamwork and collaboration are key, and these are also part of the 21st century, in that some students will send them in tools, they work in the group to go in a particular place and conduct the activities. And of course, the element of creativity, where by the end of the experience, some students come out with the ideas of entrepreneurial skills, which enable them to create jobs and also be self-sufficient. In terms of implementation, the following are found to be very important in terms of implementing these service learning programs. One is institutionalization, that is making service learning to be part of the university curriculum as an instructional strategy or learning activity, or even as an exciting extracurricular activity. All these were found to be in play at St. Augustine University of Tanzania. And some, some participants suggested that it is better to make service learning optional or voluntary so that people with a passion can really go for it and really benefit a lot. And it's also important to engage early adopters so that there's people who are really like it and they can easily utilize the service learning can actually be able to promote it. And another aspect is faculty buy-in. Let the faculty members who are interested in it own this program and move forward. Another key factor important in this is capacity building in that we need to train people we need to train the teachers who want to use this program to be able to use it. And we also need to engage community partners. We need to identify really where can the students find placement for the community service activities. And the funding is very important. We found that most of these activities are not unfunded by the universities, which is a quite challenging in this part of the world. And at the end of the day, there's important need for critical evaluation. What are some of the challenges to implementation? One is that time was not really available enough for the student to do these things, even for the teachers, because of having a lot of other things to do. And there's also curriculum overload, whereby students are doing so many units and there are also assignments, so they don't even find time to carry out such activities. There was lack of institutional support in this university, which will be encouraged to take place. There are few experts in the area of service learning, and that's why training is very important because like I'm the only one probably who did a PhD in service learning. So I at least um, can try to train others. Funding is a challenge. And also we have got some people who are conservative who tend to resist change. In conclusion, we understand that the future of work won't be about college degrees, but it'll be more about job skills. And that's why service learning stress students where they can apply their skills and gain real life experience which they can use later on. In conclusion, service learning program may not offer magic solution to the complex problem of graduate unemployability, but it can make a big difference in that it shapes students' career paths by bringing them in contact with their lives they choose and with people they will work with in the future. Students gain work-related experiences, and this type of activities restores in students' minds the connection between what they are learning and the people their education is meant to help. And finally, it enhances students' academic, professional, and life skills. I will say, I will read the Chinese proverb, which I find very important in relation to service learning. Tell me and I'll forget. 
show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. And service learning encourages involvement and engagement. I will say thank you very much for listening and I wish you a nice day. Thank you, thank you to you, uh, teachers. I think that there were quite a lot of very good points in, in what you presented to, to us. Um, so can you just stop sharing, please, the, the, the PowerPoint? Thank you. Thank you so much. So now let's move to, um, to Europe, to Belgium. And we will have the pleasure to listen to Bram Pino, who will, uh, who will talk about the case of an institution white elective course uh, called Global Sustainability and Engagement within the framework of online international service learning. So Bram, you also have 10 minutes and I have been, I have been told that, well, although you have 10 minutes, uh, please uh, don't speak too, too quickly because uh, in, uh, interpreters are getting mad. So take your time uh, within the 10 minutes you, you are allotted to. Thank you so much. Um, could you unshare your screen also sure. so that I can share it? Uh, yeah, That's thank you. Okay, I hope you can uh, see it. Uh, hello, I'm Bram Pino. I'm from the Vives University of Applied Sciences in, uh, in Belgium. And the case I will present to you today is a uh, a case of an online service learning or an international service learning course, which is a result of an ongoing institutionalization process of service learning in, uh, in our institution. Before I go to the, to the course, I will give some more information on the context in which we, uh, we operate. Um, Vives is part of the Kai Leuven Association. It's an association of uh, Catholic higher education uh, institutions, which are linked to the Kai Leuven uh, University. You see all those dots were a few, about 15 years ago, were different higher education institutes, which have all been merged into different uh, higher education institutions. So Vives is part of West Flanders. It's only, uh, we, have, we have a very small country. Uh, it's only 50 kilometers from Kortrijk to Brugge, so that's very close. So it's about 200 kilometers from Kortrijk to Hasselt. So giving you some, some idea on the scale. Um, Vives has seven campuses. Uh, the furthest away is Kortrijk from Ostende, which is about one hour drive, with six uh, fields of study, about 17,500 students students, and as you can see, about 2,000 partner companies. Partner companies, not only non-profit, but for sure, uh, profit companies. Um, there is, most programs are offered in Dutch, but there are also some uh, English uh, bachelor programs, and also one advanced uh, bachelor program in, uh, in English. There is a total of one, 125 directions you can choose from within those six uh, fields of study. The different fields of study are spread over the different campuses also. So there is a need for collaboration between those different campuses to provide uh, the same program to, uh, to the students. Um, there was a need when the school was um, merged, and which was in 2013, there was a need for a shared, uh, a shared story. And the story can be told with three keywords, drive, connection, innovation. This is the, the basis for the shared story within the, within, the, uh, within the school. Under drive, we understand that students should really be happy to learn and take their own learning into their own hands. 
connection, which is the place where service learning is really coming forward, is on learning together with society, also living together within society where you reside. Innovation refers to uh, human-oriented digitized, so there's large uh, distance programs and also future-proof uh, education. So these are the three words and uh, service learning fits under the term connection. Um, in order to really connect between those different campuses, a choice was made to have election, um, elective institution-wide courses. These are courses that are offered to all last year students and they have to choose from it. So they come together into those courses. The course Global Sustainability and Engagement is offered. Uh, you can see it in the first semester and in the second semester. And there's no prior application needed. So every student can enroll. In the white, uh, white courses, because there are only limited places there, students need to apply to, to have a spot in those, uh, in those courses. So an, a way to connect within the university or within the institution is by providing uh, institution-wide courses in which all students from the different uh, fields of study come together. Um, the course Global Sustainability and uh, Engagement is a course that is given in English. Uh, choose, uh, students can choose. They can either take it in the first or in the second semester. It's provided in, um, in two study amounts, either three uh, ECTS or five ECTS. They are all in the same course, but the students who choose for three ECTS need to follow less courses. The second choice that students need to make is a choice between a theoretical track in which uh, students opt for uh, writing a paper, so they follow the courses and they write a paper, or for the engagement track. This, is, uh, this was a new option uh, last academic year and the engagement track, that's where service learning comes into place. So the students of the two tracks are in the same uh, course. They follow the same classes, but they come to a different uh, end product. First year that uh, this option was given uh, in 2020-2021, uh, there were 108 students who chose for this course, of which 26 opted for the engagement track. And that uh, provided six groups of, uh, of uh, students who worked on service learning. This year, only for the first semester, the enrollments for the second semester are still uh, ongoing. There are already 81 students enrolled, of which 16 opted for the engagement track, and they are divided now in, uh, into three groups. Um, so how is, uh, how is the course um, how is the course build up? Um, for the theoretical part, the learning aspect is in the nine guest lectures on SDGs, and they have to go to the final poster fair to give feedback on uh, what is presented. There is no serving aspect in this course. It's, they have to write a paper. And there's a bit of a reflection task. They need to uh, hand in a small, a small task after each lecture, and they end with an academic paper engagement track, they can follow the same guest lectures on the SDGs, but they don't need to follow them all, not all nine, because that way they can um, get more time to work on their uh, group work. The serving part is students work in groups on a case or a challenge that is provided by a societal actor. That actor can also be our institution. We can, students can choose to do something for their fellow students. Reflection, there's an intermediate intervention with the students, and there's also a final presentation on the poster fair upon which the students receive also feedback from their fellow students. There were, um, so there were six groups last year. Uh, there were two groups in the Philippines, the above two um, screenshots are screenshots from the webinars they provided. So it was on 
responsible consumerism and also on uh, the green revolution uh, which in which they provided webinars to their uh, to their Filipino um, communities. Um, in Belgium, there was a book box that was developed. Uh, some students also worked on uh, responsible food uh, with the lazy student foodie, and also good food for good students. Um, there were students who developed something for education here in Flanders. Um, so there was there was a series on the SDGs um, for secondary education and also a series on uh, LGBTQ phobia, uh, which was presented also for secondary education. So it was a range of products that were uh, delivered. Um, but with the track that was developed, there were also some challenges for the lecturers, for the students, and also some for the organization. We saw that students have a bit of a problem with identifying the right partners to work with. Um, and because there's only a limited uh, time of space, there, there's only one semester to do the to do the group work. That's a, a challenge that needs to be overcome. So they they should be guided more towards the right partners. Uh, we had hoped that uh, there would be good integration between the local and the international students, but I guess Corona was a bit of a, a challenge there because the students had to work from. Yeah, they, they stayed in the Philippines, they did not come to Belgium. For the lecturers, the challenge was how to guide those international uh, off-campus students. Um, the time gap between Belgium and the Philippines was quite large, so that's a challenge for, for everybody, for the students and for the lecturers to connect with each other. And also, other, another aspect is how can uh, lecturers follow up the different partnerships. There's a session in the first semester, there are uh, activities in the second semester, so they need to be in, con in constant contact with those partners. And for the organization, um, we are trying to set up some support for on how to set up sustainable partnerships with uh, organizations and also to provide some support to uh, lecturers who want to start up um, service learning into their courses. So not only for this uh, for this this course, but for the whole institution that we're setting up some kind of preparation for those students. Okay, and this was a story I wanted to tell you. So thank you very much. Thank you, you're welcome. So I think that this um, this course is a, is a very good example of uh, of a practice that could be replicated um, elsewhere. So thank you, thank you, Graham. Um, so now, just a moment, okay. share the screen. So now we are we are moving to Asia, and our next speaker is uh, Cecilia Cecilia Sianipar, who comes from uh, Sanata Dharma University in uh, in Indonesia. And she will uh, share with us a reflection analysis of uh, of the students engaged in service learning in uh, in uh, her university. So, Cecilia, the floor is uh, is yours. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Um, good evening. Because here in Indonesia, we almost seven p.m. here. Um, so. Uh, I will share my PowerPoint. Okay, thank you. So the title of my um, paper is Reflection Analysis of Sanata Dharma University Students in Service Learning Program. Uh, we are here um, in the city of Yogyakarta so uh, the students here who participate in service learning program, they are um, they were come to Yogyakarta to do the service learning in 2016, um, and uh, we do we did this uh, for several uh, times by the 
um, at school AP. So this is the introduction. Uh, SLP or Service Learning Program is a program that initiated by HQAP or the Association of Jesuit College and Universities in Asia Pacific since 2008. This program held annually to provide students in Jesuit universities to serve and apply the values of Ignatian pedagogy in everyday life. Excuse me. Uh, the Ignatian pedagogy uh, provide, provides a way of learning that focuses on achieving competence, conscience, and compassion. This is corresponds to the uh, Pope Francis, uh, to the whole education from head, hands, and head, hands, and hands. Uh, the service learning program gives opportunity to share concern and commitment to continuously improve the quality of learning process on promoting students' conscience and compassion on societal problems. Uh, this is the cycle of uh, Ignatian pedagogy. So it starts from experience and then uh, they do the reflection and then action. Uh, the, the program is in a way action research for the students. They learn by doing something in the society. Together with the community, they identify a problem and do something to resolve it and study how successful their efforts are. So the eight Jesuit universities host the program alternately each year, and each university provides a theme which addresses their social concern and concrete situation of their country, such as urban life, poverty, health, and environment. During the SLP, the participant follows a series of activities which are uh, start from pre-SLP, opening ceremony, program orientation, immersion, closing ceremony, reflections, and post-SLP program. Uh, Sanata Dharma University students who participate in the program are required to publish their reflection after joining this program. The reflections are published in a magazine called GEAR, which stands for Grow in Experience, Action, and Reflection. So the purpose of this study is to analyze the reflections written by Sanata Dharma University students who participate in batch nine, Achku API Service Learning Program year 2016, which hosted by Sanata Dharma University. And the theme for this SLP is serving the city, serving the people, developing youth social movement within the urban communities. So there are eight students' reflections representative from total of 16 participants. The research follows the guidance by Graham Gibbs reflective cycle. This cycle gives structure to learning from experiences and offers a framework for examining experiences. Uh, it covers take six stages. Uh, the first is description and then feelings and thoughts evaluation, analysis, conclusion, and action plan from the experience. Uh, so this is uh, the uh, like, uh, Ignatian pedagogy is uh, competency, conscience, and conscience. So the competency uh, spread into context, experience, and evaluation, and there is reflection and action. So the whole person education uh, it corresponds competency with head, and then with the Gibbs reflective cycle, their description, evaluation, analysis, and conclusion. And for the conscience, um, uh, it corresponds with heart, uh, feeling, and thoughts. And conscience or actions, it corresponds with hands and action plan. Uh, the results and the discussion, it can be described that the experiences from the SAP 2016 make them understand, live, help, uh, not to judge, and can communicate, analyze, and live in harmony with others. Even though they feel 
tired, afraid, give up, and sometimes happy when understanding other people. They slowly learn how to understand people. They find a solution with others. They change their thought and they want to be a communicator. And also they want to be diligent and loyalty to small things. Uh, before the SLP, they never give any contribution, never be aware and never, never feel the presence and never realize that to understand someone is a matter of patience and willingness to learn. From this SLP, they realize the importance of being together, understand, strong, solid, and support each other. For the conclusion, they will take actions in their neighborhood uh, engage with the community, be along with others, uh, not to be stubborn, to be softened, and to be a person for others. The follow-up action after the SLP is to always have team discussions, be a humble, caring, and not judgmental person. Learn from others, share the culture to engage with others, and be thankful in every way. Uh, through the study of in-depth and reflection analysis, it can be found that the students can learn through experience during the SLP and make tangible action for their society. This relates to Ignatian pedagogy, which prioritizes students for not only having, having competency, uh, the head, but also conscience and compassion, the heart and the hands. Uh, terima kasih. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, too. It was a, a nice, nice study um, grounded in the uh, Ignatian pedagogy. So uh, greetings to all uh, the Jesuit uh, universities and participants from Jesuit universities that are following us. And so now we will move to, um, to Portugal. If I'm not wrong, so just a minute. Try again to. Uh, it's not this. Oh. Okay. I'm trying to to share my screen. <clears throat> but I cannot. <laughs> okay. A moment because I cannot share my screen. I don't know how to do so. I think I need them. If you need, I can share mine and start the presentation. Don't worry. Uh, maybe, maybe because I don't know what I did, but I can no go back to the, the Zoom, you know, the full screen. Okay, so. We will uh, move forward, and so we are moving, as I said, to um, to, to 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 Portugal, to Portugal, yes. <laughs> and so uh, well, not to Lisbon, but to uh, to Porto, if I'm not wrong. So Eduardo Eduardo Lopez will be our next uh, speaker, and will uh, share a presentation about educating for the SDG. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Eduardo, and I'm from Universidade Católica Portuguesa in um, Porto. Uh, the paper that I'm here to present is Educating for SDGs, Analyzing Students' Reflections on a Service Learning Experience in uh, Higher uh, Education. Start just to explain a little bit about service learning. Um, service learning is an educational methodology that combines academic studies with practical work in, work in the surrounding community. Students are challenged to put into practice the concept learned in the classroom in service of the community. Service learning can be linked uh, to a curricular unit or extracurricular experiencing, which is the case that I'm going, I'm going to tell you about. Educating for CDG 
was uh, online and extracurricular service learning experience for students here in uh, Catholic and in Porto. The main aim was raising the awareness, awareness about the CSDGs among young people. We, we have uh, 15 uh, students from Universidade Católica Portuguesa in Oporto, from several bachelors and masters, and we divide them in groups of um, three elements each in a total of five groups. Um, they work as a total of 44 hours, um, 15, 15 hours of work in the classroom, like uh, lectures, like um, theoretical uh, lessons, 23 hours uh, of autonomous work, like um, preparing the presentations and um, and development the um, training sessions that I'm going to tell you about, and the six hours of work with the community. The experience starts by educating the students of university about um, sustainable development goals and how to create and developing development uh, training session. The aim with these uh, first sessions was to challenge students to create an um, SDG training, um, SDG formation uh, training session for colleagues of the university, for, for secondary and high school students, and for um, international universities. Um, in total, we have um, 15 training sessions in here in the university, in um, high school, um, with the high school students, where our students uh, study when they was in the secondary, and uh, with uh, two international universities, the um, Catholic University of Pernambuco in Brazil and the uh, Catholic University of Angola. This was a total of 25 hours of training, 20 second, 200 secondary students and 80 university students. Uh, the the um, service learning experience had uh, evaluation um, in which the parameters were the attendance, the individual final report, uh, a poster of which group on the project and by the formative moments dynamized. Uh, we have in total five posters that uh, divulgate the experience and show a little bit about the work and the um, learning outcomes that the students have with uh, this experience. Like I tell you, um, the main learning outcomes of uh, this experience were the ability to analyze and synthesize, the ability to organize and plan a lot of information in about SDGs and transform all of these in um, a training session uh, with one hour, uh, two hours, writing and oral communication, um, the technology technology knowledge, the teamwork, the leadership, the creativity, and also the knowledge about the SDGs and its uh, applicability on their future professions. Uh, this paper was based on the analysis of the two written reflections carried out by the students, one halfway through the experience and one at the end. The qualitative analysis was made into with NVivo software and the codification was made from the student's tests from the intermediated and the final reflection separately. The number of participant students was 15, like I tell you before, 13 females and two males with ages between 19 and 21 years old. 12 of them work and uh, 12 of them was from graduation studies and three of them 
on a master degree in programs in programs like bioengineering economics management law microbiology or even psychology here you can see the results of the um, analyze of the reflections the table show shows the codifications that um, were the um, that were the reflections of the students and counting the number of times that uh, aspect is mentioned and how many students refer to it. I like the development of soft skills and, and the improving economic, social and environmental awareness, awareness that in the middle of the experience were only mentioned between six to nine times um in the students reflections and which in the end the end uh of the experience in the final reflection uh it's mentioned between 17 and 18 times also talk about the topic of broadening perspectives by working with people from different curricular areas this aspect that only was mentioned in the final reflection but which ended up being mentioned by more than half of the students let me read just a little bit of, about a final reflection from one student that said working with colleagues from different backgrounds instigate a healthy discussion and allow me to listen and learn from other points of view Consequently, broadening my view on the SDG team. Teamwork also promotes the ability to communicate between colleagues and the ability to yield and understand opinions that are contrary to one's own. We conclude with this paper that um, was a highly valued um, service learn experience was the first um, service learn experience in extracurricular year in the university um, that the experience leads to a personal transformation inspiring change of attitudes behaviors and mindset and raising their own as well as the community's social conscience the students were impact with uh, the active participation in the community in the community in discussing the um, SDGs and by the different perspective and constants that arose. They already they acquire or strengthen soft and professional skills and have a greater uh, motivation. Sorry, Eduardo, I want to let the interpreters know that they are both talking. So Camila and Pierre, one Yes, thank you, Pierre. Okay, uh, I'm going to conclude. Um, um, like I said, um, the last conclusion that we have is the, um, the students um, have a greater motivation for um, social intervention and to implementing social projects. projects. To conclude, and to finish my presentation, um, as we mentioned in the paper, we consider that this experiencing has a lot of potential and uh, it should continue to be a bet as a methodology of education and awareness of the um, social uh, sustainable development goals. Thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, thank you. That was surely a, a very enlightening uh, uh, study. Thank you so much. So now let's move. I will try to share my screen like this. <laughs> uh, let's move to, um, to India. Uh, we have two speakers uh, in this case. I think that uh, the first one is gonna be Rijo Sharma. And uh, the second part of the presentation will be ensured by Hazel Walang. And they will uh, talk uh, to us about the study that they conducted on the experience of a student volunteers 
in the program called Swas Chiayan. Of course, I'm sure they will pronounce it better than me. So please, uh, Riju. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Am I audible? Am I audible? Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. You. you yeah. You. You. You can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, greetings from uh, Sam Don Bosco University. And as Hazel is uh, getting uh, ready with the presentation, I'll just give you a very, very brief uh, uh, a background about this uh, paper. Well, as part of our service learning program, the students and faculty of our university uh, uses a multi-prone strategy to address issues of poverty, health, drinking water, cleanliness, gender parity, and education with the aim to engage students in achieving local community and national development, as well as working towards the sustainable development goals. And the paper that we are presenting today reflects one such program that is Swastiyan, which is a literacy program started by four students of the Department of Social Work in few villages near our university and in a place called Deporbil, which is a wetland mostly inhabited by the fishing community and fishing being their main source of livelihood. But with the wetland shrinking and the livelihoods of these communities being at stake, issues of poverty, ill health and education emerged. And in response to it, four students of the Department of Social Work initiated the literacy program called Swastayan, a commitment in the year 2013. And I'm so happy to share with you that it's, it, continues till date. And uh, the three domains, that is the cognitive, effective, and the psychomotor domain have surfaced very, very significantly in this program. Like it is very interesting to note that the four students who initiated the literacy program uh, uh, is from uh, a neighboring state of Assam, that is Meghalaya, and they did not know the language, the local language. But yet, I think there was a very strong call from the heart and they could uh, in, they could communicate and initiate the program and the program which was started by four volunteers have now become a movement and we have around 100 to 150 volunteers every year volunteering for, for this program and it's going very strong and now I would request my colleague Hazel to make the detailed presentation. Hazel over to you. Uh Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the wonderful people from all around the world right here. I would like to continue from what uh, Dr. Riju had mentioned. Okay. I totally agree that education should mold our students to be forces for good in the world, where students apply their knowledge to bring positive changes in the real life situation. And Swastayan is one such opportunity that we give at the university to mold our students to be socially committed individuals. Swastayan was initiated by four students eight years ago to promote quality education and reduce inequality. In fact, it was featured as one of the best practices for sustainable development goal 10. Sorry, uh, Hazel, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, it seems that the PowerPoint is not moving. Uh, for me, it's moving. No, no, not for our, all the participants, sorry. Because well, I, I thought that, that your colleague was just making a kind of, you know, contextual presentation and then that you would use the PowerPoint and we can see that the, the PowerPoint is not moving at all. So we were wondering. Yes, maybe. yes Hazel, it's not moving. Uh, yeah, yeah, now, 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 now we see the first slide. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Right. Now it's in the introduction. Thank you. Okay. So, yes. And uh, it was featured as one of the best practices for sustainable development goal then reduce inequality in uh, 2016 uh, under the International Association for University Global Survey on Higher Education and Research for Sustainable Development. Okay. So many students have volunteered in this program and to assess their experience and its contribution it has on them. We did a small uh, qualitative study where 20 students volunteer were selected randomly out of which 10 of them are already working in different fields. The data was then analyzed um, thematically. 
uh, through Swasayan, we agreed to the road to commitment model, where we believe that if we want our students to be committed to change, they must be engaged in the head, uh, where they have an understanding of the change that they want the, to make, engage in the heart, um, where they feel and believe that they that the change is required and they must engage in their hands where they act and plan strategically to bring about the change. Yeah. To engage the head, the volunteers conducted a family and community visits to have a better understanding about the different issues in the villages surrounding the university. They identified few of them like lack of quality education, school dropout, peer pressure, unemployment, low economic status, uh, domestic violence, and so on. After identifying these issues, the volunteers use critical analytical skills to assess the extent that these issues impact the community, especially our students or our children that we work with. So mm -hmm. one volunteer, Fazel, sorry to disturb you again, but to the, we, we can see only the slide of the introduction. It didn't move since then. So sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> it didn't move, but it's okay. Now I think it's okay, yes. I can see uh, the one entitled head. Is that right? The slide entitled head. Okay, thank you. Uh, for me, it's moving actually. So, okay, uh, after they identified the issues, um, they, they see, they assess the impact that it has on the children. And one volunteer even said that most children are quite intelligent, yet they display serious neglect towards education, probably because most of them are first generation learners and their parents are least bothered about the importance of education. So here our volunteers had to apply their academic learning uh, the acquired knowledge and skills through Swastayan services to bring positive change in the life of the rural community children. Is it changing now? To the heart? No, not for me. And I think not for the others. No, no. Now, now it's fine. I think I will just leave it like this, probably. Um, so when it comes to engaging the heart, we give the volunteers to uh, something to feel about by being in touch with the real issues and then understanding that they have the ability to bring a change uh, showing them that they can be a part of a noble cause like one student uh, said the idea behind swastayan was pure selfless genuine and kind that is why they volunteered so and knowing that the cause is being supported by the teachers and friends kept them motivated to serve. And in fact, uh, they in turn become influencer of change. By motivating, they motivate other students to join through their testimony that uh, Swastayan services has impacted them as service providers and not only to the beneficiary. The skills, they, they would tell their friends that the skills that they gain have a great, a positive impact on what they do now, especially for those who are working in different fields. Is it changing? Okay. Yes. So understanding, so understanding the need and having a calling to do something about, it helps them engage their hands effectively. So here the student, or the volunteers feel socially responsible to bring social transformation that causes them to act. They in fact come up with different services like family uh, community visits to mobilize children and engage parents, free tuition classes for high school students, uh, community self-help week for fundraising to make the program self-reliant and then conduct various uh, competitions and life skill education to promote self-esteem, confidence, and enhance the psychosocial competence of the children. And annual day was also organized every year to acknowledge and appreciate the work of the volunteers. And in 2015, a community counseling center was also set up to give personal and uh, family counseling 
because most of the children that we work with are either victims or witness of domestic violence. And of course, no program runs without challenges. And to overcome the challenges, the volunteers had to conduct mobilize, uh, mobilization campaign, meeting the parents, promoting recreational activities, and making the program more participatory and child-friendly in nature. So Swastayan enhanced the personal and professional growth or the quality of the volunteers. As one volunteer said, we realized the importance of teamwork, rapport building, uh, approachability, and learning the local language because most of our students are not from the, from the state of Assam, they are from different states. And for us, one village to another village, also we have a different dialect. So understanding the local language enhanced the effective implementation of the service learning program. And then commun uh, communication skills, learning skills, uh, leadership skills, patient and teaching experience are few of the qualities that most uh, volunteers mentioned that they gain. When the volunteers were asked to rate their experience at Swastayan on a five-point scale, 74% of them rated the experience as very good and 26 of them rated the experience as good. Okay, the student volunteers have a positive experience and were able to identify concerns or issues of the community and take actions to contribute to its solution without disturbing their academic performance. So the experience enhanced their understanding about the curricula and connecting it with the community needs. The volunteers also confess that the experience helped them perform better not only in their academic performance, but in their workplace, as they were able to develop their uh, employability skills to this program. So till date, 692 volunteers were engaged in Swastayan and were able to enhance the holistic development of the rural kids. Yes, this program helped the volunteers to engage their head by becoming aware of the issue, engage their heart, by feeling socially responsible towards it and engage the hands by acting upon it to bring social transformation. I would like to end this presentation with a quote from our volunteer, one of the respondents, saying that we are blessed with many opportunities and it is our duty to give back for the development of the society by sharing and applying whatever skills and acquired knowledge from our university. In fact, there is joy and satisfaction in contributing to something good. Thank you. Kublai Shibon. Dhanyabha. You're welcome. So it looks like the, the program is, is really uh, very much appreciated. And this is also encouraging for, uh, for all of us and for all uh, those that are working in, in service learning and making it happen. So now we will, um, we will welcome our last speaker of uh, of this uh, round table uh, the last one is Aniswara Pavelia who has a presentation uh, on self-efficacy attitudes and skills in service learning projects of Romanian students so if I'm not wrong we are moving to Romania for this uh, last presentation you, you have the floor, the floor is yours. Hello, please confirm that you can see my presentation. I'm sharing the screen right now. Uh, not yet, we cannot see it yet, but maybe within a few seconds. Now, now it's fine. Okay, thank you. So greetings to everyone from Romania. Uh, my colleague, Lorina Kulik and I, we are teaching at Babeshwar University here in Cluj-Napoca. And we have conducted a study um, entitled Self-Efficacy, Attitudes and Skills in Service Learning Projects of Romanian Students. We would like to start by saying that in the Southeastern European context, uh, there is limited research on uh, service learning values and learning outcomes. And also uh, we could find uh, just few research studies on self-efficacy in service learning in this uh, geographical area. 
Our colleague Alina Russo from the Department of Psychology has uh, already implemented some service learning studies on um, learning outcomes and course creation and also examining the role of uh, universities as agents of change. Therefore, our study is uh, one of the first attempts to explore the service learning mechanisms in Romania. We started from previous research showing that service learning projects usually advance students' civic learning and their uh, active citizenship. Um, I guess everybody agrees by now that there are multiple benefits of service learning for all the actors involved, um, namely students, faculty, universities, communities. If we were to talk about the benefits for students, uh, here we would list um, a, a long number of benefits, uh, like fostering higher education, increased self-efficacy, the development of civic attitudes and values, uh, the increased civic awareness, um, studies also mention a greater sense of charitable and social justice responsibility and changes in uh, beliefs and stereotypes. Uh, our study has uh, been built on the four quadrant model of service learning and the four R's of service learning, reality, reflection, reciprocity and uh, responsibility. Uh, we have looked into the relationship between university students service learning self-efficacy and their civic attitudes and skills by exploring the impact that the gender, the occupational status and the previous volunteering and uh, service learning experiences uh, can play. We started with four research questions. So we wanted to see whether students are confident in their ability to make contributions to the community through service learning projects. We were also interested in emphasizing the gender differences related to students' community service self-efficacy. And last but not least, whether there's a link between their self-efficacy and the civic attitude skills, uh, civic attitudes and skills, and um, these two variables and their previous um, volunteering and service learning experience, as I have previously mentioned. Um, the research design is based on a quantitative regression, a regressional study. Uh, we only had post-test assignment assessment, so this is something that we would like to, to correct in our future studies. Uh, but we also thought about controlling potential, potentially confounded variables. Uh, our sample consisted of 188 students uh, who are first-year students enrolled in the communication and advertising uh, department in an interpersonal communication and social psychology class. Uh, the sample is quite imbalanced as you could probably see in uh, most of the studies on service learning, 71% of uh, the students are female. This is also uh, consistent with um, the um, uh, general distribution of the population of students in communication and uh, advertising students. And it's quite homogeneous when we look at uh, age. So we had a mean age of uh, 19, 0.8 years with a range between 18 and 25. Uh, regarding the instruments, we have used two valid scales. Um, the first one is Community Service Self-Efficacy Scale, developed by REEB in 2010. And the second one is uh, CISQ, Civic Attitudes and Skills Questionnaire, developed by Molly. We also looked at the, the entire scale, but took into consideration the, the six subscales for the civic attitude and skills questionnaire. Uh, we had four hypotheses. So the first one uh, was dealing with um, a comparison between male and female students. And uh, we have found out that compared to males, female students tend to display a higher level of community service self-efficacy. This is consistent with previous research, namely uh, with the one developed by Reeve in 2010. Uh, and also uh, female students display a higher degree of intention for community service and future volunteering op opportunities. So if I take a look at the results, I think it was 47% uh, of the male students displaying an intention of continuing the, the service um, compared to three quarters of the female studies. The second hypothesis looked um, at the relationship between self-efficacy and civic um, attitudes and scales. We took into consideration the entire scale and here we see a regression of 0.65, but we also looked at uh, the six subscales as I previously uh, mentioned. 
the results so, show that uh, student self-efficacy influences mostly their civic action, the political awareness and the problem solving skills, but to a smaller degree, the leadership skills, the social justice attitudes and the diversity attitudes. Then we looked into the relationship between previous volunteering and service learning experiences and these two constructs, so namely self-efficacy and civic attitudes and, uh, and um, uh, skills. So here you can see the, the results. Um, previous studies have mentioned that there is a link between them, but as you can see, is quite, uh, quite small. So if we were to move to the, the conclusions, to the discussion of the studies, first of all, as we have seen in previous studies, females tend to score higher on intentions for community service, uh, civic action, interpersonal and problem solving skills, and also for political awareness and social justice attitudes. Um, students tend to report good leadership skills, and this is one of the limitations of the uh, service learning studies, namely that they are looking at self-assessment of students. So it might be that students are rating their leadership skills uh, higher than they actually are. So this is something that we, we would like to uh, look into in our future studies. And also they feel confident in their ability to improve the life of the community. But most of the research on this kind of service learning programs um, emphasize the idea that we usually look into the intentions. So intentions are not necessarily an indicator of the actual behavior. So students might be expressing the intention to continue the service learning program or to emphasize the opportunities or the advantages of this kind of pro pro programs, but still do not act upon them, act upon the intentions. Um, still, our study shows that the more confident students are in their ability to contribute to community project, which is also developed through direct experience, through direct service learning programs, the more prone they are to formulate intentions to uh, participate in civic actions. Uh, these kind of intentions could, though, represent precursors of attitudes, intentions, and, and as I said, uh, actual behavior. <laughs> Uh, so two conclusions can be drawn. First, the first one that community self-efficacy influences student civic attitudes and skills on all six subscales of CISQ. And the second one, even though previous studies have been demonstrated that there is a link between previous volunteering and service learning experience for our sample of students, um, these two have not impacted significantly students' community self-efficacy nor their civic attitudes and skills. As future research, uh, we have some recommendations here, uh, which are also consistent with, uh, with other studies. So first of all, um, I think this kind of studies should focus on outcome assessment and on student satisfaction with service learning. Uh, also um, emphasizing the, the impact of um, social desirability. Second, I think there's a huge need for longitudinal studies that could emphasize the mechanisms involved in, uh, in developing uh, attitudes, intentions, and actual behavior related to, to the civic uh, perspective, to the civic domain. Uh, also, I think a more diverse sample could be used in terms of gender, but also in terms of age. We would like to uh, continue with the service learning project for projects for next year and uh, maybe have a comparative perspective on long distance students where uh, we have um, a larger uh, range of, of age. Uh, but also taking a look at different uh, majors maybe. So comparing students from the communication department to students from the psychology or sociology and so on. And last, uh, I think we have to mention that there's a need for mixed methodology research and also for uh, follow-up studies. So we would very much like to implement this kind of follow-up uh, for, for the um, semester that we have developed the projects with the students. Uh, just a brief overview of, uh, of the project. So as I said, we had 188 students. Uh, we had more than 45 projects dealing with educational topics, um, I don't know, sexual education, activities for children, develop developing technical uh, skills of teachers uh, working with children. Here you can see on the left um, a project dealing with uh, um, 
the relationship between having an animal and the well-being of the of the students. Uh, we had projects like the one that you can see in the middle here, like the sheds up dealing with um, gender diversity and also the rights of the women and uh, body image for women. Uh, students had influencers involved in this kind of campaigns. It, it was a lot of fun to, to see how they have grown um, during the semester. We had also studies um, dealing with diversity. You can see on the right here, uh, one looking at gender diversity. Um, we had so many projects that I don't have, we, I don't think we have enough time to, to discuss about them. We just brought here some pictures for them. So thank you very much. Uh, this was our presentation. Thank you, thank you for this uh, rich, uh, <laughs> rich study and all the, the, the research uh, programs that you, you've been conducting on, on service learning and for, for all the, uh, the information, um, the useful information that you are providing to, to all of us. Um, so well, this was the, um, the, final, um, the final presentation of this, uh, of this round table and um, Fortunately, now we have some time for for questions. So here we go. We um, we already received some uh, some questions. Um, uh, so I think that we can start with the ones that we received, and then we will see if uh, if others come to us and we feel we have time or not to, to answer them. I will start with uh, one that uh, is addressed to Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin from uh, Cameroon. So I will read in, uh, in English. And if not, I can do so, I can, I can uh, uh, translate it if necessary. So Benjamin, um, the question is, um, which is the added value that students can offer to the community after participating in the course, uh, uni in the university square? So could you elaborate a little bit? I think it's about the link between the students and the community. How do you make this link? Yeah, through the participation of the students in the choir. Uh, I cannot, I cannot hear Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin, are you with us? Mm, I don't know if he has some kind of technical problems or if he had to leave the, the room for a few minutes. Oh, no. Benjamin. Okay, so we will wait for, for Benjamin to, to connect again to us and I will, um, I will uh, tackle the, the second question we received, which was addressed to Titus, to um, Titus Pacho from Kenya. So the question is, uh, if service learning makes it easier to find a job, right, to enter the, the labor market. Why isn't it compulsory? Why are you, you know, um, maintaining it as an optional, uh, an optional um, component? Hello. Hello. Yes, you can hear me. Huh? Yes, very well. Yes, when it makes it easy for people to get jobs by getting some relevant skills, even though that is so, but most participants say that if it's voluntary, we'll get the right students who have the passion to deliver to the community. Because some people will just take it as part of going, just going to the crowd, just do it for the sake of it, but they don't have the passion really to deliver. And as such, those with the passion will really have impact on the community because we find that for service learning to be more effective, there must be reciprocity. So that means that if I'm doing something to the heart, I perform better. So if I'm sent to do some community service, 
I will do it with the passion and the outcome will be more than if I'm just doing it for the sake of it because it's compulsory. That's what I will say from the experience of the student who investigated. Okay, I think it was, it was quite clear, quite a clear answer. So now I will um, address uh, uh, the following um, question to Bram, right? Bram Pinot from Belgium. So Bram, this is the question, uh, are students, uh, those students that experience collective life more open to cultural differences than others? Are they more open thanks to this experience, right, uh, of collective life? Um, I think that's, that's, that's a good question. We did not really research that um, yet. Um, I also think that students who choose for uh, the engagement track are already more open to cultural diversity. And yeah, it's, it's something that should, should be researched really. Uh, I guess they are much more open after the course. Um, but yeah, that needs, uh, that needs some kind of research. Uh, Okay, no, no problem. And uh, since uh, you are you are with us, uh, I have another question for you also. Um, mm -hmm. The question is: How does your program or your institution ensure cultural sensitivity for the partner higher education institutions or for the partner communities? Yeah, um, this is also quite difficult. I don't think we can say we can ensure that um, students are aware of what they are will, going to do and where they will uh, reside. Um, from the internationalization department, um, there is some kind of preparation for outgoing students. So students who go to uh, do some international uh, study they are prepared either by Vives or by the partner they are going, uh, they are going to work with. For the incoming students, um, they are welcomed as a group, uh, by, also by the internationalization department. Um, and this is part of what we are trying to do as an organization in preparing uh, the students for doing some kind of service learning experience. It's really stressing that they are not the experts who go to some to a place uh, and will tell what people will do and how they will act. That there is, we stress that the principle of horizontal reciprocity really, and also that they are learning together with the community they will interact with. Um, so, but this is also an ongoing process. Um, we are working on it. Uh, Okay. Okay. And Bram, uh, so far, this is the, the last question that comes from Romania, for, from our Romanian colleagues. Uh, they would like to know if it's the first encounter with service learning for your students, or if your students have already previous service learning experience. But it depends. Um, it depends from the field of study. Um, in education, in social work, it's quite easy to experience some kind of service learning in which there is a connection between uh, working in the fields, the academic study, and also the reflection. These are study areas in which it's more natural for the lecturers also to do, um, to do some kind of service learning. In the other departments, um, it's more of a challenge, and I think they are less prepared to do some service learning in the third year. So students from education and social work who are in their third year have probably already undergone some kind of service learning uh, experience, but students from the more technical uh, study areas, likely not, I guess. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Bram. So now I, uh, I can see that uh, Benjamin uh, is back. 
Uh, Benjamin uh, Mem, uh, I have um, one question uh, for you from the audience um, that I will read in English, uh, but I can translate uh, into French if necessary. So Benjamin, um, uh, participants would like to know which is the added value that students can offer to the community after participating in the university square. It means, you know, which is the link, in fact, no, uh, for, for between the students and the community, you know, through, which is the link that is established uh, through their participation in the choir. How do you establish this link no, between the students and the community? I think that the, the, the question uh, goes into this uh, direction. Okay. Um, excuse me. For me, please, in French. In, in, French? in French, please. Okay, so just a moment because the question was, la, la, la question était, voilà, elle, elle est là. Elle so here, était... here it is. The question was in French. I translated it back into English. So the question is, after their experience in the university choir, what is the added value that the students have to offer to their community for its transformation? So. I think they actually wish to understand better the link that is established between the community and the student through the, the experience with the choir. Benjamin speaking. As I was saying, when students join our university, we have a program which capitalizes the academic learnings they already have. But given that our university aims at providing all students with a holistic training, so a full head, a charitable heart, and a strong spirit, but also the sense of being open to others, caring for others. So service learning turns students into people who can get inspiration from the realities and the social facts that they see on an everyday basis in order to have a life experience and to acquire attitudes inspired in the gospel. They will then adopt an exemplary posture capable of generating change within those that they are serving. Through the program, the members of the choir learn to pay attention to others' needs and to care for the situation of others. They know how to consider the social reality of their environment. And they have a better capability of judging the acts of those who surround them. So I think the service learning program is important for that dynamic, meaning that the members of the choir through what they sing, will no longer think of their own needs, but they will have the civic duty, the religious or evangelic duty towards those that surround him here in the university. Great. So oh, um, I think that we will uh, we will admit one more question, and then we will close the um, the session. Uh, well, yeah. this is uh, this is not addressed to to one of the speakers in particular. So any any of you uh, can can answer it. The question yes. is if the um, if the service learning programs that your institutions are offering are one off or if the students continue with the program after graduation, 
if there's a continuity after they graduate, some some, some kind of continuity, I guess, with uh, with the service uh, learning programs that uh, they were involved uh, in uh, when uh, being uh, undergraduated students. So I don't know who would like to uh, to answer this question. Okay. Well, more. Maybe I, yeah, I, I, I can start. I can start just to kick off the discussion. And I'll say that here at the Catholic University, by applying our service learning program, we wish to teach our students how to embody the program and become ambassadors of the program once they have concluded their studies so that they embody the pedagogic values of the program. And wherever they go, whether at work, at home, within their families, at church, they will carry these values with them and these virtues that they have acquired through the program for the benefit of all those surrounding them. So it is no longer a mere pedagogic um, tool for their own personal transformation, but rather they will share those learning methods, the service learning methods in a way such that they will have a positive impact on all those with whom they will be in touch. So the program isn't only internal for their university studies, but rather once they have graduated, they will be joining their society as professionals, as members of a family or others. And given that they will carry the virtues of the program wherever they go, that they will be the ambassadors of the learning service program. That's my take on it. Somebody else wants to say something. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Let's, Patrick, let's see here. Yeah. So I will. I will say that um, the idea of continuation is quite important. Continuity in experiential learning as well. I think when we expose students to service learning activities or experiences, is the idea to develop skills. And I think when we develop skills, it's meant for lifelong living. That means that we expect that after they gain this skill through practice, the students will be able to continue with these skills, wherever they may be, and even inspire their own colleagues and the comrades to do the same. My experience is that uh, most of the skills the student gets are some of the transferable skills, for example. That means they can trans transfer them to other aspects of life. What I've realized is that uh, once you have really done service learning with that passion, it remains with you. Because I remember when I was doing my service learning at a Jesuit college, after that, it inspires me to continue engaging in community engagement. So service learning enhances what is called sensitivity to civic engagement. Civic engagement is not only in the school, but civic engagement means that I am sensitive to what's happening around my community and I'm able to take action and reflect to improve that situation. And our idea is that one day have internalized these important skills of actually doing and reflecting and learning out of it. It is something which is going to remain with them as long as they live, if they are really passionate on what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think that we will close the, um, officially close this, uh, this round table because it's, uh, it's almost um, 3 p.m. Paris time, but I know that we are located in uh, different parts of the world. So I just share my screen for the last time. Uh, so I would like to, uh, to thank very, very much all the speakers for uh, having joined us uh, today. Uh, and shared uh, all their experiences and studies on, on service learning. We, we have learned a lot, <laughs> really a, a lot from uh, what they have shared. 
I, I would also like to, of course, uh, thank all the uh, participants that um, got connected and that followed this uh, roundtable. And um, if you uh, would like to find uh, the abstracts of the presentation, <coughs> Uh, as well as the, uh, the author's contact details, you can go to the um, symposium website where you will find all the, all the material. Uh, on the website, uh, uh, you will also um, have access to the virtual posters. And we invite you all to, to read and comment these materials and uh, to leave us your greet and comment uh, until next Monday. So. Uh, don't don't hesitate to um to to make your comments and to send it to us. You can do so until Monday um, uh, next Monday, yeah, November the first, inclusive. And uh, well, last thing I, I wanted to say is that um, the the symposium is going on, so stay with us. Uh, now there's a break, and after the break, um, there's a panel that will. So stay, stay with us and uh, thank you, thank you once again for having um, having followed uh, during the this two hour uh, roundtable. Thank you, thank you to all.